Welcome to Holy Heartbeats. My name is Nathan, and I narrate Christ-centered testimonies from all over the world. These testimonies include rapture and end times visions, near-death experiences, encounters with angels and demons, God, Jesus, and even Satan himself. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you are fond of listening to these types of stories, and let me know what you think about these testimonies in the comments section below. Let's get started. Dear friends, we will be sharing the fifth and sixth chapters of the testimony of Jonas Lukuntu Impala, who devoted nearly 25 years of his life serving Satan. If you want to watch the previous chapters, you can easily access them by clicking the link provided in the description box or in the highlighted comment found in the comments section below. In this video, we will also narrate Jonas's testimony from his perspective. Let's get started. There are three types of men as viewed by Lucifer himself. Lucifer's observations of humanity led him to categorize men into three distinct groups. The first group consists of individuals fueled by animosity and envy. These are the people who would not hesitate to harm their peers without any personal gain. Lucifer assigned the color black to this group. The second group is made up of individuals who seek to rationalize and explain everything. These are the people who employ science in an attempt to comprehend the existence of God. Lucifer designated this group with the color white. The third group is composed of individuals who crave wealth, prestige, control, and power. They are prepared to commit heinous acts to achieve these desires. Lucifer attributed the color red to this group. The three types of magic correspond to these colors, black, white, and red. There is a common misconception that black magic is exclusive to Africans. However, even in Europe there are practitioners of black magic, although it is more prevalent in Africa. White magic is associated with occult sciences such as Rosicrucianism, the Grail Message, Ekankar, Freemasonry, Christian Science, and Mormons. Focusing on black magic, it is further divided into several subcategories. Witchcraft, Islam, Jainism, an ancient branch of Hinduism that rejects the concept of a supreme being and promotes profound respect for all life forms, and holy magic. Holy magic encompasses all three colors, red, white, and black. However, we will focus on witchcraft for now. There are three distinct types of witchcraft. Number one, conscious witchcraft. Individuals in this category, like myself, consciously identify as witches. They are fully aware of their actions and intentions, these witches understand that they partake in rituals involving the consumption of human flesh and blood during the night. It's important to note that many of these individuals can be found within religious institutions. Number 2. Unconscious Witchcraft This category includes people who don't see themselves as witches but are unknowingly used by the conscious witches. To identify if you're a victim of this form of witchcraft, you need to pay attention to your dreams. For instance, if you often dream about eating, engaging in sexual activities, serving food, cooking, or being chased by faceless figures, and in the end, you find yourself flying like a bird, you might be involved in unconscious witchcraft. Waking up and feeling relieved that you've escaped is a misconception. In reality, you're being utilized by witches. Speaking from personal experience, not hearsay, I can confidently say these are the signs. There are many instances like dreaming about swimming in a river or going to sleep in perfect health but waking up with unexplained pains in your head, spine, or abdomen. If you're involved in unconscious witchcraft, conscious witches can use your likeness to cause disturbances to others. You may be blamed for these disturbances, even though you're unaware of your involvement. Number 3. Blood Witchcraft The primary indicator of this form of witchcraft is a lack of compassion. Another sign is frequent and almost daily physical punishment of children. Let me clarify here. The Bible, in Proverbs chapter 23, verses 13 to 14, encourages discipline for children, stating that punishment will not lead to their death, but will save them from it. However, I'm referring to parents who misuse this advice and harshly abuse their children, which is a sign of witchcraft. Other indicators include domestic violence, where a woman physically abuses her husband or a man his wife. These are all signs of blood witchcraft. During my time in witchcraft, I was led to a place near the Musafi River, close to the source of the Congo River, where I was trained in the ways of sorcery. How can one identify if they're a sorcerer? Even as a believer, if you find yourself in the situations I'm about to describe, you might be unknowingly participating in witchcraft. 
One of the signs of unconscious witchcraft is uncleanliness. Some people struggle with maintaining personal hygiene or keeping their surroundings clean. Women, in particular, should be cautious about leaving their homes untidy. Dirt and clutter create a conducive environment for witches. This is known as dirtiness witchcraft. Here are some elements we were taught. Hatred. Some individuals harbor intense dislike for others without any justifiable reason. Vengeful spirit. Some people, including Christians, believe in an eye for an eye. However, Romans chapter 12 verse 19 advises us not to seek revenge but to leave it to God. If you're a believer and you've been wronged, let God handle it. Some Christians still harbor hatred, despite Romans chapter 12 verse 21 instructing us to overcome evil with good, and Romans chapter 12 verse 18 urging us to live peacefully with everyone. Sadism. There are those who derive pleasure from causing others pain. They feel good when they see others suffering. This is not normal. We should empathize with others in their time of sorrow. Excessive jealousy. Some people want to possess everything, leaving others to beg for scraps. If others manage to acquire something, it causes them great distress. This is a form of witchcraft. Disrespect. Respect should not be limited to your parents, but should be extended to anyone older than you. Lying. This is a significant issue, even among Christians. Some people can't go a day without lying. If you find yourself in a situation where there's nothing more to talk about, it's better to part ways than to make up false stories. Betrayal even occurs among engaged couples who claim to be Christians. Living this way will not make the devil fear you. Even invoking the name of Jesus will not make the devil tremble unless you're someone who walks in the fear of God. Being a Christian is not just about the label. You must walk in newness of life. Being a child of God means renouncing your old ways, becoming a new creation, and walking according to God's will. Only then will sorcerers and the devil fear you. During my time as a sorcerer, I possessed 24 mystic eyes. When one says a sorcerer has six eyes, it implies that the sorcerer has taken two lives. Given that a person has two eyes, multiplying two by two gives you four. Add these four to the two ordinary eyes, and you get six. However, I had 24 such eyes. Today, by God's grace, I am free and walking in the light. The Bible assures us that even if our sins are as red as crimson, sincere humility and repentance before God will cleanse us, making us as white as snow. As I am in Christ now, there is no condemnation for my past deeds with the devil. With these mystic eyes, I could see everything. If God were to open your spiritual eyes to the world, you'd be shocked by what you'd see. There are people who walk upside down, Others appear as skeletons, and some beautiful young women appear as old women. This is because their youthful appearance has been stolen and replaced with an old age mask. Such girls tend to switch partners frequently. If you find yourself in such a situation, be vigilant and pray fervently for the restoration of your true appearance in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft exists, whether we acknowledge it or not, and it's present in every family. Our only refuge is in the Lord Jesus. When we are in this city of refuge, demons can see us but cannot harm us. If you are in this refuge, don't risk stepping out. The Bible warns us that the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Leaving the city of refuge exposes you to danger. Through my mystic eyes, I saw many things. Demons, Christians, non-believers, and hypocritical Christians. Hypocritical Christians and non-believers appeared naked, without even a thread on their bodies. Imagine the humiliation of a two-year-old sorcerer seeing you naked because you lack sanctification. It's unacceptable and degrading. We must strive to deepen our relationship with God, and He will protect us, preventing sorcerers from seeing us. Regarding Marketplaces Whenever I step into a market, I feel a sense of unease as these places are hot spots for demonic activity. For every market, regardless of its size, Lucifer assigns six legions of demons, each legion consisting of 13,000 demons. Thus, a total of 78,000 demons occupy a market. So, when you visit a market, it's crucial to pray at home beforehand, asking for the Holy Spirit's guidance to lead you towards uncontaminated products. There are many unclean items that people unknowingly purchase and consume. Lucifer has two main objectives when people consume these items. Firstly, to harden the hearts of non-believers preventing them from accepting Jesus. Secondly, to weaken the faith of Christians. 
you may notice a significant difference in your devotion to God compared to before. This leads to a curse as stated in Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 10, with Jesus adding in Revelation chapter 2 verses 4 to 5 that those who forsake their initial love for him and fail to repent will have their lampstand removed. Regarding traffic accidents, I'll briefly share how I was used by the devil in causing traffic accidents. One day, a friend and I were on a bus journey from Likasi, intending to cause an accident and claim ten lives. We had just passed Louisa when a pastor on the bus started preaching. We looked at him with our mystic eyes and saw him naked, yet he continued preaching. It's important to note that many pastors today act as signposts, guiding others towards heaven, but failing to live according to their preaching. As this pastor preached, a sister on the bus was moved by his words and began speaking in tongues. At that moment, my friend and I were thrown out of the bus and found ourselves in the Buluwo bush. Strangely, we were physically in the bush, even though the bus windows were intact. Angered by the incident, we blamed the pastor, believing that if he hadn't preached, the sister wouldn't have spoken in tongues. We decided to kill the pastor. Transforming into sparrowhawks, we flew away and found the pastor in Kibambo, where we killed him. It's a stark reminder that God's work must be handled with care, as God cannot be mocked. What a man sows, he will inevitably reap. Concerning Night Flights I want to share a powerful testimony with you about night flights. This testimony sheds light on the importance of remaining vigilant and knowing how to combat sorcery. It's crucial to understand that becoming a Christian doesn't mean that all sorcerers have converted as well. They continue to practice their craft, and it's essential to be aware of their actions. During our night flights, something extraordinary happened. We were able to see the houses of pagans and hypocritical Christians without roofs, frames, sheets, or ceilings. It was as if these structures were stripped bare, exposing everything within. This phenomenon occurred because sorcerers had the ability to look into these houses and see everything. If someone was considered a hypocrite or a pagan, the sorcerers could easily observe their activities. However, there were other houses that we could only see from a distance. These houses were surrounded by flames of fire, making it impossible for us to approach them. These flames of fire not only protected the houses, but also had a significant impact on the surrounding area. Even neighboring houses were shielded by these flames. It was remarkable to witness the divine protection at work. Now, let's delve into what allowed us to descend into the houses without roofs. Firstly, spiderwebs played a crucial role. From a hygienic standpoint, spiderwebs are considered dirt. However, spiritually, they act as antennas through which sorcerers gain access to your homes. If you have spiderwebs in your house, it's important to remove them immediately to prevent any spiritual intrusion. Secondly, the presence of photos, pictures, and idols in these houses was a contributing factor. These included images of a false Jesus with a red heart and ray lights, a false Mary, and a cross with a depiction of Jesus' crucifixion. It's important to note that Jesus is no longer on the cross. These images are considered idols, and idolatry is condemned by God. As stated in Exodus chapter 20 verse 4, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. To truly honor Jesus, he should reside within us, not on our walls. Thirdly, any houses where someone is engaged with fetishes are susceptible. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 11 clearly states, There shall not be found among you anyone who consults the dead. Even individuals with incisions are unknowingly involved in sorcery. When you visit a witch doctor, they make incisions on your skin and apply a mysterious black powder with unknown incantations. This powder mixes with your blood, allowing demons to enter your body. Additionally, a few drops of your blood remain on the witch doctor's blade, which they report to their master. By giving your blood to Lucifer, he gains control over your life and can hinder your projects. Lastly, it's crucial not to go to sleep with unresolved conflicts in your house. Settling disputes before sleeping is essential because leaving conflicts unresolved opens doors for Satan to harm you. During our visits to these houses, we would strategically place nets around them before leaving. This was done to prevent people from waking up in the morning and attending church for morning intercession or weakening their morning prayers. We were aware that if these individuals went to church and sought prayer, everything we did during the night would be rendered ineffective. The Church of Christ is a place where problems are brought and solutions are found. 
These are some of the remarkable experiences we encountered during our night flights. It's crucial to remain vigilant, cleanse our homes of spiritual impurities, and resolve conflicts before sleep. By doing so, we can protect ourselves from the influences of sorcery and experience the power of God's divine protection. When we embarked on our sorcerer's planes to venture into the realm of sorcery, a fascinating sight awaited us. We found ourselves surrounded by rivers and trees, with peculiar holes scattered throughout the branches. As we descended into this mystical realm, we encountered a diverse group of individuals, women witches, men sorcerers, and even young sorcerers. Each person arrived with their own set of family problems weighing heavily on their hearts. One striking example involved a witch who approached, loosened her loincloth, and retrieved a paper hidden within. With a swift motion, she tossed the paper into one of the rivers, uttering a word with conviction. The children of so-and-so will never complete their studies. Another person followed suit, casting their paper into the river, declaring, This individual will never prosper. These instances were just a glimpse of the countless scenarios unfolding in this realm. Each time a paper was discarded, a corresponding word was spoken, sealing the fate of families. It's crucial to understand that these actions and words were not taking place in our world. The rivers and trees we witnessed were not of this earthly realm. They belonged to the sorcerer's world, a realm where their intentions materialize. It is there that they cast their spells and shape the destiny of unsuspecting families. Tragically, many families find themselves living according to the will of these sorcerers, unknowingly subjected to the outcomes predetermined in that otherworldly realm. Their lives are influenced by what has been thrown into the rivers and placed within the tree holes. Countless individuals abandon their studies without any apparent reason, despite having the opportunity to pursue education. This is simply because sorcery has already dictated their fate. Within these families, the effects of sorcery are palpable. They suffer the consequences of what has been done in that parallel realm. However, dear child of God, I want to assure you of something profound. On the very day when your life was being hindered, when sorcerers were plotting against you, Jesus was watching. He witnessed every moment when your path was being blocked and your destiny altered. You may wonder, Jesus, my God, if you saw this happening, why did you allow it? The answer is simple. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. When we stray from his protection, sorcerers can exercise their influence upon us. But take heart. For those who have Jesus Christ as their master, grace is with you. In his divine grace, there is hope, redemption, and the power to overcome the schemes of sorcery. Trust in his unfailing love and find solace in the fact that he is aware of every injustice committed against you. Through him, you can rise above the grasp of sorcery and embrace the abundant life he has destined for you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Beloved, when a father senses that his time on earth is coming to an end, he takes the necessary steps to ensure his legacy lives on. He begins to divide his possessions among his children, creating a will that outlines his wishes. However, while the father is still alive, his will holds no power. It is only upon his passing that his desires are set in motion. In a similar manner, when we examine the individuals who have caused obstacles in your family's life, we find that some of them are sorcerers who have already departed from this world. When these sorcerers spoke their incantations against your family, they were essentially creating a will, dictating the outcome they desired. And now, as we speak, these sorcerers are no longer among the living. Yet, their will still lingers, affecting the lives of families today. This is how we witness families experiencing long-lasting effects, as if they are bound by a predetermined fate set by sorcerers. But fear not, for our God has also made a will for us. In Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, God declares, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This is God's will for us, beloved. And through the death of Jesus on the cross, this will is immediately set into motion. As Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 states, Having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. Now that the will of the sorcerers has been nullified, it is time for us to embark on a journey of restoration. We must reclaim what has been stolen from you by these sorcerers. 
If you find yourself discouraged, I bring you a message of encouragement. When we search for something tirelessly, putting in all our efforts but still come up empty-handed, discouragement can take hold. And once discouragement sets in, doubt follows closely behind. You may hear people lamenting, saying, I was only meant to accompany others in this world. This is a common sentiment for many. But I urge you, do not be discouraged, for there is still hope as long as you are among the living. With the cancellation of the sorcerer's will, we now set out to reclaim what is rightfully ours. We are not embarking on a fishing expedition for fish, but rather, we are fishing for the blessings that have been stolen and hidden in the realm of darkness by sorcerers. Through faith, we will retrieve what is rightfully ours. In a moment of prayer, the Lord revealed a vision to me, depicting ancient Egypt. As I observed the scene, I saw many people toiling away, but their labor did not benefit them. The word of God spoke to me, saying, Do you see those people working over there? They work diligently, but their efforts do not yield personal gain. This is the reality for many children of God. They work tirelessly, yet they do not reap the fruits of their labor. Sorcerers are the ones robbing them of their deserved blessings. I pose a question to you. Who is exerting control over your life? Who is sitting upon your destiny? Everything you possess, the work you engage in, and the rewards you receive are mere crumbs compared to what you should rightfully have. Sorcerers have been manipulating your life without your knowledge. But in the name of Jesus, we will trample over our enemies. We will overcome the sorcerers who have plagued our families, neighborhoods, and streets. As for those who have a tendency to speak excessively, be aware that you may unknowingly betray yourself. It is essential to exercise discretion and refrain from sharing everything with just anyone. Those who talk excessively must exercise caution, for even worldly individuals understand the saying, talking too much can be detrimental. Let me take you on a journey to explore the signs that may indicate the presence of witchcraft in the lives of children. These signs can help us uncover if children are being unconsciously used in witchcraft. One of the signs to watch out for is when a child is easily distracted and experiences lapses of memory. They tend to forget things quickly, even if you remind them just a few minutes ago. For example, if you ask a child to bring you a cup, but instead, they bring you a knife, it could be a sign of unconscious manipulation through witchcraft. Additionally, a child's lack of intelligence, constant fighting, and rebellious behavior can also be indicators. Now, let's delve into the danger of raising cats in relation to witchcraft. Cats are often used by sorcerers as a means to involve people in witchcraft. They have a sneaky way of getting people involved. For instance, a cat may come near you while you're eating, and as it scratches itself, its hairs may fall into your food. And just like that, witchcraft begins. But how does one actually enter into witchcraft? There are three ways in which this can happen. Firstly, through signing a pact or contract with a sorcerer or witch doctor. Instead of seeking help from Jesus, some may turn to these individuals for a solution to their problems, unknowingly becoming involved in witchcraft. Over time, the fetish or object given to them will transform them into conscious sorcerers. It is important to remember that Jesus is the ultimate solution to any problem we face. Secondly, witchcraft can be inherited within families. It is crucial to be cautious if you are suddenly assigned the role of family head or given a responsibility that involves witchcraft. This can be a deliberate attempt to involve you in such practices. Lastly, witchcraft by influence is a form of involvement that occurs without one's intention. It can happen through food. It is essential for parents to be mindful of the spiritual state of their neighbors and to be cautious about where their children eat. It is better to be safe and not allow your children to eat outside the home unless you are certain of the spiritual environment. Please remember that witchcraft brings destruction in all areas of life. It is crucial to be vigilant and seek protection from the Lord in order to safeguard ourselves and our loved ones from its harmful effects. Objectives of Sorcerers in the Church As a former sorcerer, our mission was to disrupt the effectiveness of the Church, which represents the visible army of Jesus Christ. We were assigned various tasks to achieve this goal. The first task was to make the children of God ignorant of the Word of God. The sorcerers would draw the attention of the preachers and manipulate them to divert from preaching the true message. By performing certain incantations, they would tie up the tongue of the preacher, causing them to forget their prepared message and instead share stories that were not edifying. 
The devil instructed them to do this to weaken the faith of Christians, as faith comes from hearing the message of the Word of God. The second task was to keep the children of God in poverty and under a curse. They would create a sense of dullness during offering time, causing some people to feel hesitant to give. The sorcerers believed that if the children of God gave their offerings, they would break poverty and recover what had been blocked by the devil. To push people to be under a curse, they would encourage offerings that did not honor God, going against the biblical principle of giving the best to God. The third task was to block the projects of the church. Powerful sorcerers would infiltrate the group of leaders and fight for higher positions. They would attend important meetings where church projects were discussed and report back to the sorcerers. The sorcerers would then send demons to discourage people from giving, causing all the projects to fail. These objectives and tasks were aimed at weakening the church and its members, hindering their spiritual growth and prosperity. It is important for believers to be aware of these tactics and rely on the power of God to overcome them. How to Identify Sorcerers in the Church Recognizing sorcerers in churches can be done by observing certain behaviors. Restless individuals who constantly move around without reason are often indicators of sorcery. If you come across such people, it is likely that you are dealing with sorcerers. When sorcerers enter churches, they are unable to bring their fetishes inside during the intercession period when there is intense spiritual heat. Instead, they leave the fetishes outside and remain inside the church. At a certain point, they retrieve their fetishes and begin operating within the church. If you notice people frequently moving back and forth without a valid reason, it is a sign that sorcerers are present. So, what did sorcerers do in such situations? If the preacher was powerful and walked in the fear of God, sorcerers were unable to silence them. In such cases, they would resort to causing distractions. They would send spirits of drowsiness to make people doze off during the preaching or perform mystical injections on children to make them cry uncontrollably. These distractions prevented people from fully engaging with the preached word. This is what sorcerers did in the past and continue to do in churches today. Now, regarding sorcerers who fall during the night. It is not uncommon for sorcerers to fall during their activities. When a sorcerer falls, it signifies that the blood they used as fuel was insufficient. When this happens, people often gather and start beating the sorcerer. However, the sorcerer does not feel any pain and instead makes funny faces to evoke sympathy and avoid further punishment. If you are wondering what kind of whip can be used to inflict pain on a sorcerer, it is not a broom as commonly believed. Sorcerers use brooms to fly, so beating them with a broom would not cause them any discomfort. There are only two types of whips that can inflict both physical and spiritual pain on a sorcerer. The first is euphorbias. When sorcerers are beaten with euphorbias, they experience double pain. As a sorcerer, if you ever fall one day, remember that the whip to be used on you is already known. However, as children of God, we do not need physical whips. The Bible teaches us in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of evil. Our battle is not physical but spiritual. It is important to remember that sorcerers are also eligible for salvation, as God seeks to save the lost. Our fight is against witchcraft, not against individuals. The Hierarchy of Sorcerers In the top position, we have the presidents and queens who hold authority in the realm of witchcraft. They sit on chairs constructed from human bones, utilizing the leftover bones from their meals. Following them, we encounter the supreme sorcerers. It is important to emphasize that supreme sorcerers are the leaders of sorcerers in each neighborhood. Every neighborhood has its own chief sorcerer, including yours. The supreme sorcerer is responsible for reporting the activities of their entire neighborhood to the higher authorities. However, the neighborhood chief does not work alone. They collaborate with the avenue chief and the street chief. Every avenue and street has its own chief sorcerer who oversees the sorcerers in that area. The avenue chief's role is to gather information within the avenue. They visit homes, engage in friendly conversation, and take advantage of people's willingness to share details about their lives. You may unknowingly disclose personal information about your family, such as upcoming dowry payments or important events. Unfortunately, you may not be aware of the true intentions of the person you are speaking with. The avenue chief then relays this information to the neighborhood chief, providing a report on the avenue's activities and issues. 
Have you ever witnessed situations where families, despite having made arrangements for dowry payments or other important events, experience unexpected setbacks? These situations are often caused by sorcerers. The neighborhood chief compiles all the reports received from the avenue chiefs and delivers them to the higher authorities during the night. They exploit the information you willingly provided to hinder your plans. For instance, they may assign a sorcerer from your own family to sabotage your marriage, fertility, work, health, or business. You may find yourself working tirelessly without reaping any rewards, while sorcerers who do not work seem to benefit from your efforts. The Bible states that the worker deserves their wages, and we should enjoy the fruits of our labor. However, if you maintain a consistent prayer life, sorcerers will no longer be able to manipulate your blessings. When sorcerers target a neighborhood, they obstruct various aspects of life. From the issues they obstruct, they establish laws that govern the area. Consequently, you may notice that in certain areas, marriages do not proceed as expected, or individuals struggle to complete their studies. There are even cases where people experience difficulties in one neighborhood, but find success and fulfillment upon moving to a new area. This is because sorcerers have already established their laws in the previous neighborhood. As children of God, we should not be compelled to relocate due to the laws established by sorcerers. Instead, we should rely on prayer and faith, cancelling their laws in the name of Jesus. Continuing on the subject of supreme sorcerers, there are disturbing practices that take place in the world of darkness. When sorcerers want to enter this realm, they use a call whistle. This whistle has a unique power that attracts unconscious sorcerers to join them. Once gathered, these unconscious sorcerers are transformed into horses, serving as a means of transport to the world of darkness. Unfortunately, this has consequences for unsuspecting individuals. At night, while people sleep, sorcerers utilize their transformed forms as transportation, causing discomfort and pain in the spine or back of the individuals involved. This explains why some people wake up with such symptoms. It is a result of being unknowingly used as a means of transport by sorcerers. Furthermore, in the world of darkness, sorcerers engage in disturbing activities during their gatherings and celebrations. They would take people's heads, which then become their balls, for entertainment. This explains why some individuals wake up with headaches, as their heads were unknowingly used by sorcerers in this manner. During these gatherings, sorcerers also utilize the bellies of unconscious sorcerers as drums, creating music and rhythm. This may cause individuals to wake up with abdominal pain, as their bellies were used as drums during the night. Another shocking revelation is that sorcerers take the legs of people and use them as guitars. This explains why some individuals have incurable wounds or experience problems and pains in their legs, as their legs were unknowingly used as instruments by sorcerers. In addition, sorcerers have the ability to manipulate the dreams of individuals they sleep with. These individuals may find themselves experiencing sexual encounters in their dreams, unaware that it is not a mere dream, but a result of sorcerers' influence. Lastly, it is revealed that sorcerers engage in cannibalistic practices, consuming human flesh in the world of darkness. Individuals may have dreams of eating without realizing the disturbing reality behind it. It is important to be aware of these practices and to seek protection through faith and prayer. By having Jesus Christ as our master, we can find grace and protection against the works of sorcerers. My fellow brothers and sisters, grace be with you all who have Jesus Christ as master. My dear friends, we will be sharing the continuation of Jonas's testimony in our next video. What have you learned about witches and warlocks in this video? Do you have any encounters with them that you would like to share with others? Let me know in the comments section below. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you in our next video.